Mikhail, good morning. Good morning. Let's start with Jurian Timber today. How much of a blow is that to your ambitions this season? Huge blow, uh, especially for him, because uh, after just joining the club to to have the injury that he has, it's a, it's a huge disappointment for him, obviously for the team, as in a big blow, because we recruited him with clear intentions, and what he was bringing to the team was evident, uh, and he's not going to be able to do the decision for us. So, uh, yeah, we have to adapt. These things happen, unfortunately, and, um, and we have to move on. How is he? How's his reaction? He's been very good, to be honest. He's a special character. Um, he knows, I think he starts to realize um, the extent of the injury and and the amount of time that he's going to be out. But uh, but he's in a good place. Um, so they are all willing to help him, obviously, and, and we are all very close to him. But uh, it's going to be a long journey. You said you had to adapt. Does that mean a change in thinking? with regards to transfer market, not necessarily just incomings, but outgoings as well? I'm more thinking about the resources that we have within the team, you know, to to keep doing what we want to do. But it's true that he was giving us very different things in terms of what we could do in both sides. But uh, again, it's things that happened and, and we have to be prepared for that. Is it a benefit for, an op say benefit, an opportunity, shall I say, for a player like Kieran Tierney now? to potentially have an opportunity in the first team? It's an opportunity for everybody, you know, and, uh, and we're going to need everybody and everybody's going to be important and the numbers that we have in the squad, especially in those positions, are more limited now, so yeah, everybody has to be ready. What is the situation with Kieran then? Because he was left out of the squad against Nottingham Forest. Is he still part of your plans? Well, he played the final, no? So a player that plays five days before in the final, it is part of the, of the plans for sure. Was he disappointed to be left out of the first Premier League game? I so? hope so, yes. Yeah. Uh, moving on to the, an incoming, Danny Breyer joining. Mm -hmm. uh, you must be really pleased to get him in. I know it's a player you have been looking at for quite a few years. What can he bring to the squad? Better qualities for our game model, very simple. And, and we want two players per position that they can do that and, and do so. What happened to Jurian? It can happen to our goalkeeper. It happened to Courtois. So you need to be prepared um, because the question would be, no, and what is the two goalkeepers of this size? Yeah. And if he would sustain, Aaron would sustain a cruciate, then what do you say? You then change the, the thing. So we have to be prepared, we have to be proactive, and uh, we have two excellent goalkeepers now that fit exactly what we want in our model. So I'm very happy with that. Is there a number one? With, in any position? No. Nine, seven, eleven, six, goalkeeper? No, there isn't. And finally, uh, what's the latest team news? And in, any injury updates on the likes of Zinchenko? Well, Alex is doing very well. He's been training with us, and, um, and hopefully we're going to have him available very, very soon. And no other concerns other than that we know about no, Gabriel? And no, after the game, no. Gabi is still not available and not fit, but the rest is, is all good. Thank you. Go to Anita from the Premier League. Good morning, Michelle. Hi. Um, I wanted to ask you about Kai Havertz. Um, we've seen him play in two different positions in these first two games of the season. How do you feel he's settling in and which or which position do you think he best slots into in this Arsenal side? He's fitting really well. I think he played a, a really good game against um, City. He had two big, big chances to score. And, and he didn't, but everything that he gave apart from that, it was, it was excellent. And the other day as well, he played in, in two different positions throughout the game. One more as an eight, another one more as a ten. Uh, I'm really happy what he's bringing to the team. Um, his intensity, his mobility, his threat, uh, his understanding of the game and spaces, um, and the way he's fit around and the boys as well. So, really, really happy with him. I wanted to pick up again on the defence. You can imagine that there's some concern amongst the Arsenal fan base with this Julian Timber injury. Mm. Do you feel if the transfer window were to close tomorrow, you'd be confident with the defensive players you've got that you could challenge for the title again this season? Well, we didn't plan, obviously, with this injury, you know. So uh, we have to assess now what the options are, what the best way to, to get the best out of the players that we have. Because, my, as I said, my biggest... Uh, challenge now is to get the best of the players that we have. I cannot control anything that is not here, and uh, and we are always open, and we have to be always open to react if something happens. Not only with an injury, but with the market as well, and that's what we are doing.
You spoke about the nervy ending in that game against Nottingham Forest, but there were plenty of positives. What positives can you take from this almost new look Arsenal side going into the game against Crystal Palace? Well, the dominance of, of the game, the amount of times that we played in the territory that we want to, to play, the amount of chances that, that we created, um, the few things that we conceded, because we conceded one in the first half that it was after direct play, the second ball, they hooked the ball and, and they are through. And, and then uh, they counter after a set play, which both they are coming from a goal kick and the one is coming from a, from a corner. Uh, and after that, nothing else. But uh, as I said, you know, when you dominate the game as much as, as we did the other day and, and the situation that you have and, and the final pass is still not neat enough and, and good enough to finish the actions better, that's what we have to improve. So you tell them to be more clinical and dominate? We have to be when you play the games of that type. It has to finish three, four, five. And, uh, and we didn't do that, and that's why in the Premier League, and then you give something to the opponent, yeah, it's always going to be a, a nervy ending, unfortunately. Thank you, best of luck. Thank you. Hi, Mikhail, how are Hi. you? Very good. Um, can I ask you about Bakayo Saka? He played almost every game last season, um, and he, he's, he seems to be... ...driving to get the best, and competition will push Ramsdale, will push Raya. And they're both very different. Ray is brilliant with his feet, and I'm not saying Ramsdale isn't. But I think, again, when you need to play certain teams, if a team's going to pressure, you might want Raya. If you want shot stoppers, you might want Ramsdale. Who's to say? But you need competitiveness to get the best. And it was always in the outfield position, so why would it be different in goal? But Peter Schmeichel said there has to be a recognised goalkeeper in terms of number one and a recognisable number two. So they know their positions in the squad and the team. Goalkeeper's different in that respect. Has that now gone out the window? Manish, anybody that's played with goalkeepers knows they're very, very different. <laughs> yeah, um, I hear that all the time. So, um, I understand what Peter's saying, and back in the day that was the case. But Karen makes a really good point. David Raya is an amazing goalkeeper. His, his ability with his feet is top four goalkeeper all day, and that's why he's there. Mm. Um, maybe Ramza had a little blip towards the end of last season, a mm. tiny one. I think everybody respects he's done an amazing job yeah. and he's a brilliant goalkeeper. But why should there not be competition? You know, the centre forwards have competition. Maybe if I played rubbish, Sir Alex played somewhere else every time. Defenders is the same, so it should be the same with the goalkeeper. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I think it's going to bode the club well. I, I, I think he's a top four goalkeeper. I'm just amazed Chelsea didn't go in for him. I think they, they're the ones that needed him badly. Yeah. OK, so Arsenal taking on Crystal Palace. Arsenal looking to bridge that five-point gap on City from last season. Uh, they kicked off with a 2-1 win over Forest, which was a curious game. For 75 minutes, they were in total control, but then they almost threw it away. Yeah, I mean, Forest very good on the counter-attack. Um, like you said, they dominate the game, and this is a ridiculous bit of skill there oh, from Martinelli. Oh, Martinelli. Um, finish is great as well. I thought, you know, two magic moments from wide players, and this is a brilliant finish. As soon as he hit it, it's only going in one it's in the back of the net. No, five goalkeepers couldn't stop that, but this is the threat on the counter attack, isn't it? Whether we're good. Yeah, I mean, there's not many players quicker than Alanga and Awan Yi in, in, in that space. I mean, Saka, go back to that goal, he is amazing. Martinelli, it was like was a one-man wrecking crew yeah. going forward and defensively. Uh, Deck and Rice, I thought, played pretty well, a lot better than uh, the Community Shield, but they looked a little bit vulnerable defensively, and whether that's because maybe some of the little new partnerships. Mm. Uh, obviously, Timber going out with the ACL injury, that's a big blow to them. Uh, but I think, I think I'll tend to be a little bit worried, kind of, top of the pitch, they were great. Defensively, they looked a little bit... They didn't look as, as solid as we would have thought with the new yeah. additions. Let's hear what Wrighty does think about that. <laughs> He's in Australia at the moment, but he is listening and now has his chance to, to have a comeback to that. Don't Do hit me, don't hit me. Caicedo going to Chelsea nudges them ahead of yeah. Arsenal, who themselves have spent a lot of money on, on bringing in Declan Rice. Um, no, it'd be, it'd be a great... It's going to be a great move for Caicedo. Um, for me, especially alongside Enzo. I think Enzo and Caicedo will be, like Darren just mentioned, the, 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 um, the two in front of the defence that will solidify it a bit. Um, but in respects of um, them being the challenge, I, I have to agree with Tim on who's going to score the goals for them. But I think Chelsea will be in and around it. But I do feel that Arsenal will still be, still be up there without a shadow of a doubt. What do you make of this huge market now for defensive midfielders? Well, I think that what is shown when you look at... Um, teams and how they're trying to defend, how important it is to have that, 
that defensive player in front of the, you know, the back four there, you know, and, and, and when you haven't got it, how much that player is missed. I think that, you know, you look at someone like Caicedo in you know, Brighton's midfield and how brilliant he done and how good their defensive record was. I think the same, you probably have to say, even with, with Arsenal, you miss somebody like Thomas Partey. It's like that defensive midfielder does so much for the team in not only breaking things up, but it's the way that they can progress the ball as well. Um, you know, Declan Rice was playing. Look, at he's gone. You know, it's just Lavia we're seeing now, which is really exciting for him, obviously. You know, it's just a position that if you are playing that brand, that kind of football with a defensive midfielder, then he's, he becomes, like Tim says, one of the, the pivotal players. Speeds it up, slows it down, breaks the game up, how he progresses the ball. It's a very, very important player in the system now. Obviously, the goal scorer, I still believe, will always be, as Darren, I'm sure, will, <laughs> um, will, will uh, agree, will always be the most important. Um, but like that player, now the number six, the defensive holding midfielder, has become, as we can see, highly sought after and needed.